Hey there, welcome to the Xlip channel and welcome to this full you guide review of this instrument. This is the close full carbon fiber ukulele. It's a tenor style scale ukulele that is made in the United States. Now I have recently reviewed this model as well. This is the hybrid model, which is most distinguishable from the color of the fretboard and the bridge and also the neck, which is mahogany here, solid mahogany versus carbon fiber. Now there will be a separate video talking about the differences between these two. So today the focus is going to be simply on this particular instrument alone. Although I will mention a little bit about the hybrid at the end, but really watch for the comparison video of these two. Now what I do in these reviews is I first of all look at some subjective areas that I do with all instruments. Then I give you the specifications of the instrument and then I follow up with a conclusion of my own opinion. Now, if you'd like a summary of this, you can find it at youguide.info or you can jump to parts of this video that matter to you. And you can always support the work here at this channel by doing three things. First of all, you can subscribe to the channel. Second, you can like the video. And third, you can always buy me a cup of coffee to say thanks for making this material at buymeacoffee.com slash stuff. All right, let's begin with this instrument. First of all, the cost. It's pretty expensive. Uh, it sells for $14.39 um, as tested, and the acoustic version without the pickup is $12.99. So it's expensive. Um, there are full koa ukuleles from major manufacturers right at this price point. So this is the same price point um, as a full koa ukulele. Do keep that in mind. Now, in terms of value, I think you are getting exactly what you're paying for. Um, this is not a bargain sale. This is not something where you're getting ripped off. It is right where the price is. So if you want a full carbon fiber ukulele, this is really the only choice that's out there. And I think it's worth every cent that they're asking for it. So I think it's the price meets the value. The build quality is outstanding. It appears flawless in every way. And uh, there are some differences with the hybrid, but the carbon fiber is so cool with the visual illusions that it gives you as you look at it from different angles, um, put together perfectly in every possible way. It's really, really well built. Let's take a look at the inside of the ukulele using my endoscope here. We'll take a look at the lower bout first. So here we go. All right, looking in, there's the close label telling you what it is. And you can see that someone signs it, which is pretty cool. You get your serial number right there. As we look at the back, you can see there's the electronics for the pickup. You can see a little bit of, you know, where the top with that neat spiraling pattern meets the sides. There's the strings coming through as a pull through bridge. Again, sort of amazing that there's no need for a bridge plate. All they've got are some washers on there. Pretty cool. I don't know if those washers come off when you change the strings or not. So if you bought this and when you change the strings, um, you need to put those washers back on, I would definitely recommend doing that if that was the case. And just looking again on the sides here, you know, you can just see the carbon of fiber on the inside, which again is not polished or anything like that or specially finished because it's just the inside of the ukulele. So that's the lower bout. Let's take a look at the upper bout. All right, taking a look at the upper bout, there you can see uh, the neck support there, which actually looks like it may be wood. That's interesting, with some extra glue there. And there you can see some extra carbon fiber on the top as the neck comes down right above the sound hole. And you can see the sides there. Looking over to one side if we can. You know, you just see the inside of the carbon fiber and then over to the other side, there's where the electronics are. So you can see how that all connects in on the side of the instrument. And that's really all you're gonna see on the inside of this carbon fiber, uh, full carbon fiber, close tenor ukulele. Now, in terms of appearance, it's pretty plain, really. I mean, the, the stunning thing is the carbon fiber and that will attract people's attention, trust me on that. But other than that, it's very plain. So you do have a smaller headstock, which some people do not like, but um, you have no sort of binding, you have nothing flashing in the front. It's just, you've got your position markers on the front, you've got your position markers on the on the side, uh, even a black bridge and a black fretboard sort of melt into the instrument. 
So there's really nothing flashy other than the material itself. So that alone um, is its real selling point, but it's plain, but it's plain. Also that gloss does pick up fingerprints like crazy. Um, and I'll talk more about that as we go further uh, with this particular instrument in this review. Now in terms of availability, if you want to buy one of these, all you have to do is go to closeguitars.com and you can purchase one right there and it'll be coming to you rather shortly thereafter. In terms of playability, these close instruments have been incredible with their setup. I know I've talked about, for example, I've never really come across an Enya ukulele that needed a setup. They come right out of the box perfectly. This is that next level. I mean, Enya is great. I, I really do like my Enya instruments, but these instruments are incredibly well set up. Um, I cannot complain at all. In fact, the action of the 12th is only two millimeters and the action of the first fret is less than 0.25 millimeters off of the fretboard. So the action is extremely low on these instruments and super, super, super playable to the point that you almost couldn't get to these tolerances yourself without causing a buzz. That's, that's how well the setup is done. Now you're looking at a standard 35 millimeter nut, so if you're a person with large hands that wants a larger nut, this may not be the instrument for you. The string spacing is pretty wide, pretty comfortable for a uh, 35 millimeter nut. It's up to about 30 millimeters altogether, give or take. It's a little less than that, but it's close. And um, you have a, a flatter neck, so it's not quite C-shaped, it's more like a D, so it's very comfortable to play. So all in all, the playability is is really good. The only negative, of course, again, is if you have large hands and want a wider nut, that's not an option here. Now, in terms of tone quality, I think it's really good. Now, it's different than the hybrid close, which absolutely has just shocked me to no end. And again, I'll make a comparison video between the two. It's a different sound than the hybrid with the carbon fiber neck. And I would not have thought that a neck would make that much of a difference, but it does. It's an excellent tone. It is a warmer tone than the hybrid tenor, which I did not expect. And it's a little, little quieter, but that's okay too. Um, and again, I'll talk more about this when I compare the two instruments in a separate video, but it's a balanced sound with dark and warmth. It's less bright, for example, than the hybrid. Um, it's got good volume. You don't have to worry about being heard. And literally, as hard as you play this instrument, it can take everything you give it without being overpeaked in terms of the sound that you're creating. So as hard as I play this instrument, it can handle every ounce of energy that I give it without any distortion, anything weird happening. So that's pretty amazing. So I, I really like the, the warmth of this instrument that it brings and the balance that it brings. So the sound quality is really, really good. It's not the loudest instrument you'll ever play, but it's certainly not quiet. And it has a very, very balanced tone. One of the things we do in these videos is I let you see what I'm hearing with the app Tonal Energy Tuner, which just looks at the harmonic energy series as I play something. I usually play the C chord, or if it's a DGBE tuned ukulele, I'll play the G chord. Just an open chord so you can see what's happening. So let's go. Here we go. So what I'm seeing there is you hear that entire spectrum, it's showing visually. Sometimes that doesn't happen on the ukuleles that I'm reviewing. I hear something different than what I'm seeing, but in this case, you can see that whole spectrum is lighting up as I strum and it's lasting. And of course, there's a little bit more carrying at the very, very end, which also makes sense too. Um, this instrument is darker than its hybrid version with that mahogany neck and it's amazing 
that the neck makes that much of a difference. Again, watch for the comparison video between those two. The other thing I should just quickly mention is that this is an electroacoustic version of this instrument. You can buy it without this. And this one comes with a close uh, branded pickup. Uh, it seems to be a standard pickup that is offered in many models uh, versus the Fishman that comes with the hybrid. And while I respect the Fishman completely in terms of what it does, the major benefit of the close here is that you can change batteries here and you don't have to do so inside the instrument or have an unseemly um, pocket as some of the Fishman uh, systems do as well for another spot for the battery, which requires a nine volt battery. The close here is going to use uh, two 2032 batteries uh, right in that little slot there. Super easy to change. And so I very much like this system better Functionally, not necessarily performance wise, but just in terms of function, I like this so much better um, than the Fishman on the hybrid. And again, not that I don't like the Fishman or how it works, just functionally, I like this better. And I think that's okay to say. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Flight Tiny 6 amplifier here and I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to use my close cable here. Now, as I've mentioned before, uh, the close cable here is a kind of a neat cable that eliminates popping so that if you plug it into your amplifier, you don't get that instrument pop. So if you forget to turn down your volume, you don't get the whole pop and potentially cause damage to your system. So I'm plugged in right now. And I've actually not even tried that with this mounting yet. So I'll turn up until we, I, I actually hear us. Yeah, it's coming almost too much now, right? Um, through. But let's just check out the sound here through the amplifier. Picking up all four strings well. Yeah, so sound is coming through perfectly on all four strings. It's balanced, it sounds good. And of course you can change on this, you can change the volume output and you can change the tone from darker to brighter. If I adjust the tone up in terms of brightness, it's gonna be a much more, you know, tinny sound. If I go darker, you're gonna lose that high end. So generally I would say start in the middle and I've heard it said that you start with the volume as high as you want. I just, I always start mid, but again, I am not a person that plays a lot with amplification in any part, particular way. Um, only on rare occasions where I have to record something or record a performance at school or something of the sort. So that's turning up the volume a little bit. Yeah, so again, with a, a amplifier system and different boxes and other things, you can change the sound to be whatever you want it or need it to be. All right, now that we've looked at all the subjective categories of the instrument, let's talk about the specifications. It is a tenor ukulele with a measured scale length of exactly 17 inches from nut to saddle. It has 19 frets with 14 to the body, and it does have side position markers as well as front position markers. It is a double bout carbon fiber body with a carbon fiber neck. It is fully carbon fiber. The soundboard is carbon fiber. The back and sides are carbon fiber. The fretboard is a composite black material and the bridge is a composite black pull-through bridge as well. It is not a radius fretboard. That would be a nice feature to see as a perhaps a future thing that you could add. It's a flat fretboard but it certainly doesn't impact its playability at all. The nut and saddle I believe are new bone and they are adjustable, but it is not a compensated saddle. The finish is gloss all over, whereas the hybrid has a matte top, this has a gloss top, and it is a little bit of a uh, fingerprint magnet, but that's okay. You just would want to carry along a uh, cloth to wipe it off and then it'll be fine. 
It is 24.5 inches from tip to tail, not including the strap button, and it weighs one pound, 15.8 ounces, so almost two pounds. So as ukuleles go, it is a bit heavier than your standard ukulele, even a little bit heavier than the hybrid, um, but it's balanced, as you can see, very, very well um, with that two pounds. They use ratio geared tuners, which is a selling point. I don't know of many other companies that are using them, um, but they work really well. I am impressed with Graftex pro products in general, but their tunaleles, which are those plastic tuners, work really well, and these ratios are wonderful as well. The action here is unbelievable. It's under 0.25 millimeters at the first fret, and it's 2.0 millimeters exactly at the 12th fret unbelievably easy to play, set up incredibly well. The nut width is 35 millimeters, so it's 34.89 millimeters at the nut. And the space between strings at the first fret, that's where I measure it, is 9.18 millimeters between each string, which makes a 29.69 millimeters G to A, which is 30 millimeters. That's pretty roomy. It's almost two extra millimeters over your standard string spacing that you typically see with a 35 millimeter nut. So that gives the feeling as if the instrument were wider, um, like a wider nut than it actually is. So some people that might not even like a 35 millimeter nut might want to try this just to see how it feels in their hands. The neck itself, as I've said earlier in this video, is more D-shaped than C-shaped, so it is also pretty comfortable in the hand. Um, the depth of the neck from the top of the strings to the bottom of the neck at the third fret is 20.71 millimeters, which is, um, I mean, it's it seems standard, but the shape makes it different. Going from that D away from a C makes it more comfortable in the hand. All right, now that we've looked at subjective categories and we've talked about the specifications, let's summarize the instrument. First and foremost, I want to thank Close for allowing me to review this and the hybrid as well. In fact, they've let me hold on to this instrument for about a month, um, which is fantastic. It's been coming with me to school um, nearly every day. Um, it's just been a lot of fun to play this instrument and to have this instrument on hand. So these will be going back to close very shortly here, but very, very, very impressed uh, with this instrument. And I'm very, very grateful for the chance to review it. I'm hoping that I get a chance to review their eight string as well, and perhaps their concert when it comes out. And of course, concert is my scale. So again, if, if you didn't watch the other video with the hybrid, um, I heard about the concert coming out. So I emailed Close and said, hey, I'd love to review the concert was coming out. And they came back and said, sure, but how would you like to review some of our other instruments first? And I was like, well, absolutely. And I also so appreciate the chance to review an instrument and to be able to send it back. Because, um, you know, that's there's a point in your life, believe it or not, where you have enough ukuleles. And maybe if you find one that's special amongst all others, you want to buy it. But you do reach a point where you don't need to hold on to all of them. So it's nice to be able to send them back um, to a company as well. So again, to close, thank you so much for this opportunity to review this instrument. So um, I like this ukulele a lot. Um, if you wanna know which one you should buy, if you're on the fence between the two, watch my next video. But this one, the things that really appeal to me are the black fretboard, and the black bridge. Visually, I like the black on black. I like that a lot. Um, I like this close tuner a lot, and I do like the carbon fiber neck. Um, I have not experienced many problems with warping necks or anything of the sort. And in fact, I'm not worried about that because on the hybrid, for example, because there are carbon fiber rods through the neck helping keep that as well. But even on very inexpensive ukuleles, I'm not seeing much in terms of neck warpage like I have on guitars. I, I'm just not sure if the string tension is there that would cause that problem so very often. You'd have to have a piece of wood for that neck that was just inclined to warp, I think, or really weird uh, storage conditions in terms of temperature and so forth. Well, you would have no concerns about this. The tiny headstock has grown on me. Don't mind it at all, but I do understand people that say that that looks odd or small. I get it, um, but just think about it. It's it's like companies, they either make them too big, too small, 
wrong shape, copying a shape, whatever. Well, you know, I'm beyond worrying about that. If this was my instrument, that would be not even a thought in my head every time I pick up the instrument of, oh, but the tiny little headstock. But again, I think you'll see some reviews of people out there that don't like that. Works great in this case. No problems with it whatsoever. Um, ultimately, is this worth the $14.39 or the $12.99? And the answer is, if you want a full carbon fiber ukulele, absolutely 100% yes. It's worth every cent of that $12.99 or $14.39 for this instrument. So, um, yeah, that's just the, the price of entry for this. I don't think you're going to find another solution. And the solution you're getting here is a fine, fine instrument. Now, if you're arguing between this, for example, and a Blackbird, um, and in case, in that case, it would be the Blackbird Fairlawn would be the closest thing to this. The Clara, again, is actually the concert scale. Um, that would be up to you. But again, the Fairlawn is going to be made out of ECOA, where this is going to be made out of carbon fiber. And the Fairlawn, equally equipped, is going to be slightly more. So that'll be a matter of personal preference for you. Um, and you might even want to try to find a dealer that carries both and compare them or find friends that own both and compare them before making that purchase yourself. Um, I do not own a Fairlawn. I do have a friend that does. Actually, I have a friend that actually owns one of these. Actually, I think he's got the, the hybrid neck. And he actually made comment in the comments below um, about what his preference is. He enjoys both instruments, but it's okay to have instruments that become your favorite or to say, but this one is better again, but you never know what's going to happen. So, you know, not only do these things sell new, they also sell used and you see one used for the right price. I would grab it absolutely in a minute because it is totally and completely worth it. And even instrument that literally has the potential to last forever. Um, even our best wonderful wood instruments at some point may break down um, regardless of how they're cared for. But something like this, I mean, literally, your great, 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 great grandchildren could be playing uh, this instrument. That's That wouldn't be unheard of because it is made out of carbon fiber. It's unbelievable. So, yes, very much in favor of this instrument. What rating would I give it? Just like the hybrid, this is a 5.0 for me. And the only thing that potentially take it down from a 5.0, there's only two little things. First of all, I, I talked about the bag in my last video. Um, they do sell a kit, that an accessory kit. I'll get to both of those things right now. Um, this bag is a nice bag. It is. It's a nice bag. It protects the instrument. It does everything it does. But I'm not a fan of the fact that it doesn't zip open the whole way. And then there's a couple things that it's missing. I would like a nicer strap on the back. Um, or two straps on the back, either one with a, a shoulder pad. I'd like a hook here with which to hang it on a wall. Um, anytime you go to an event or if you go to public bathroom, it is really nice for people to put your ukulele up on the wall rather than on the floor, just saying that. And also a lot of the bags today come with a rubber bumper down here, same sort of deal so that you're not actually setting the bag itself on a potentially something floor. Right? I mean, I, I like that. Otherwise, the bag itself is really good. It just, the bag could have some other changes. It has, you know, lots of interesting storage, like this long storage space up here, um, sort of a thing that you can hook other things to here. A big pocket here with actual, like, places for, like, pens and cards and things. You got the whole uh, user manual, which is really, you don't need an assembly manual with this one. The guitars, I think, can come apart. But, um, yeah, so there's lots of neat features on this bag, too. I don't want to make it sound like it's awful, but there are some improvements that could happen with this bag that would make it nicer. And then as an ukulele player, I think, you know, I know it is close guitars, but at the same time, you're not playing in, in ukulele. It'd be nice, neat that this could say close ukuleles, maybe, instead, too. Right, just a thought. Um, and then the only other thought is, at this price point, $14.39 for the version with the, um, the close branded pickup, or even the $12.99 acoustic version of this, it'd be nice if the entire accessory kit were just thrown into that price, you know? And just, here you go, 
you're buying this instrument at that price. By the way, you get, you know, you get the rain cover and the strap for free or whatever. That would be nice too. But uh, beyond that, really, again, unbelievable instrument. Amazing looking instrument, even though it's very plain. Great sounding instrument. Unbelievably well playing instrument, particularly for a 35 millimeter nut instrument. Um, at exactly the price that's right. That's not a crazy price uh, for such a really playable piece of art that makes art. Pretty cool. All right, so thanks again for watching this video. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll be back soon with some more Uke stuff for you.